Hey everybody, and welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and this is episode two of Beer Pints and Brew Process, where today we're gonna to be talking about arguably the most important ingredient that you're gonna be putting in your beer, water. It makes up 98% of beer, and it's probably something that many people overlook because, you know, it can be a little intimidating. So we're gonna go through step-by-step step on how to find and create a water profile, and then how to add that chemistry into your brewing process. Grab a beer, hit that like and subscribe button, and stay tuned. So water chemistry is probably one of the things that the mo that is most overlooked and often just purposely ignored in brewing, mainly because it's intimidating and I am not a chemist. So that was probably one of the last things that I decided to get into. I thought, well, water is water is water. It really has to do more about the process and the ingredients. And although those are very important, what happens to those ingredients is because, in part, by the water that you use. So first we need to talk about the source of your water that you're using. So you can use tap or well water that comes straight out of your sink, out of your hose in the backyard, and you can use that. There's also spring water you can buy at the store. That is the same, except for it has some mineral content, it just does not have chlorine in it. And then you can use distilled or RO water, which is reverse osmosis water, which don't, doesn't have any nutrients in it at all. Okay, so it's just, uh, plain old water with no minerals. Um, tap water or well water or even spring water has minerals in it, right? It also has chlorine in it. And so we have to deal with that a little bit by using a filter or Camden tablets, uh, but, it, but it also has necessary nutrients in it. And uh, those are things that you would have to add if you were using distilled or reverse osmosis water. So for those reasons, breweries, because they don't want to buy or they don't want to use reverse osmosis water or distilled water, they will generally use well or tap water because that's readily available for them. So most of your local craft breweries are probably on a system where they're either using well or a uh, tap water from a municipality. When I first started out, I actually used spring water a lot. And uh, spring water, although it has minerals, I had no idea what the nutrition content is and it probably varies even from the same uh, brand of mineral water or spring water, excuse me. And uh, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just figured, well, it doesn't have any chlorine in it, so therefore I'll just rather use that, which is good to start, right? It, to get into brewing, you don't have to be a water chemist right away. Uh, get to know the brewing process. You can still make really good beer with just spring water. However, it really depends on where that water sourced and you know what nutrients are in it. And so for that reason, I switched back to do, using tap water, I use an inline filter, and cabinet tablets to get rid of the chlorine. But then after you've you figured that out, you know, what water additions you need to add based on what style of beer that you're gonna be brewing. And so the next question you ask yourself was, well, how do I know what's in my local tap water or my well water? Well, you have essentially four different ways to find out. And we'll talk about all of them. So there's a company called Ward Lab, and uh, the link is right here, or you can find it in the video description below. Uh, you can order a little test kit and they'll send you a little bottle and a prepaid package to send that back. Then you'll get that information. It's about $45 or so on their website, and you get all of the information in a report based on brewing specifically. Um, and that will be the one that I have put in the link description below. So they'll send you those test results. You get that back. That's specific for your house out of your tap. I would recommend doing it if you're using a filter uh, off of a hose, just take that sample right out of whatever you're gonna be brewing on, and then you know it's going to be 100% accurate. That's probably the best way to know what your water profile is. But there are alternative ways just to get you very close if you're not all that concerned that it's perfect. And that's kind of the route that I went. So you can either uh, call a local brewery and ask for it. Many of them do this regularly. Uh, if not, they've did it at least when they started so they knew what their uh, water profile was. But a lot of breweries really like home brewers because they probably themselves at one time were home brewers. So a lot of them are very willing to help you out. The third way uh, that you can 
do this is actually just call your municipality, your city, county, water, right? Or maybe you have a, a, a local water company, call them. Maybe they have a report online. Maybe there's a, a, a page that you can go to and look. That's often the case for larger cities. It's not often the case for smaller ones. And the fourth way, and the way that a lot of people may find it after this video, is actually using a website like Brewer's Friend to help you find it. One website that you can use to find a water profile near you is Brewer's Friend. You'll wanna to go to brewersfriend.com and underneath the tools here, you will see water profiles. So go ahead and click that link. This is gonna bring you to a different page that has a bunch of different water profiles that people have entered all over the world. And so as you scroll down here, you'll see that there's a ton of different cities and states and areas, specific areas that uh, have put out water reports and people have entered in. However, it's gonna take you a long time if you just try and hunt and peck this way. Go ahead and press Control F on your keyboard and then type in the city that you want to uh, look for. So in this case, we'll use Charlotte, North Carolina as an example, and it comes up as 31 different uh, findings. So you can just go ahead and click through a few of these and you'll come up with all of the items that have Charlotte in the name or in the description. And so you'll see uh, these probably probably will be from different years. Some of them have listed the year in either the name like this one has here, or sometimes it'll be listed in the description underneath it. It's also important to notice if some of these have a description that's a link like this. So sometimes you can click on these and it will actually bring you to the city's website or a different website that actually goes through uh, all of that water chemistry. So in this case, uh, the city of Charlotte does a mineral analysis and it gives us the date right here. This one was done in May and updated um, this month. And it gives us all of the information that we're looking for and probably the most up-to-date information. So we would just use this information rather than stuff on Brewer's Friend. But if you don't have a link or you don't have a source, because not every city, county, or you know, water seller does this, you would want to go ahead and just use something uh, that you find in here. This is going to get you close enough, even if it's a few years old. As you notice, most of these are very, very similar in what uh, the amounts are. And so that's going to get you close enough uh, in your brewing process to know what you need to add to get to your water profile, um, depending on what type of beer you're brewing. All right, now that you have your water profile, I'd encourage everybody next, if you're not familiar with adding salts, and what they do inside of your beer to read this really brief explanation of mineral salts and brewing salts uh, in your in the Brewers Fund web web page here. It's going to give you a little bit of uh, content about what these minerals are. It's going to talk about each of the brewing salts that you can add to change those numbers, and then what your target level should be based on uh, uh, brewing beer, and then also talk about harmful levels, and then you know talk about the different types of beers, pale, amber, and dark beers, and what uh, ranges you should be looking for. And so uh, I'm not going to go through all of that right now, but highly recommend reading that if that if you're new to adding salts or, or changing your water chemistry at all. Uh, the next link that you want to go to, again, this is under tools and under your uh, selecting water profiles, they have a basic water chemistry calculator. This is probably where most people want to start. They do have an advanced one once you start getting into that a little bit, and we'll go through that very briefly after this. So on this page, this is going to ask you about the total water volume that you use. I generally use about eight gallons, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm not diluting any of it with distilled water. And then it's going to ask you for a target profile. In this list, there's a bunch of basic profiles that Brewers Friend has added in here. So Pilsner light lagers, uh, darker lagers, you do stouts, dry stouts, um, light colored and hoppy. So if you're doing a uh, New England IPA, or maybe we're just doing a balanced profile beer, like a, a pale ale or an IPA that you want to have uh, right here. So we'll just click balanced profile to begin with, just to kind of show you what's going on. So we're going to say update our target. What that's going to do, this is going to add that target minerals down here in this chart. And here is our source minerals. This is the numbers that you got from your water profile. So we're going to go ahead and add those in. So in this case, that would be my specific water profile. And so go ahead and enter this into your, uh, based on your water profile. And it's going to kind of tell you what the deficiency would be 
uh, for each one of these minerals, right? So you want, the objective is to basically get all of these in the green, not in the red. So some of them are showing up fine already and others are not, right? So since I've moved before, I kind of have an idea of what I need to do to uh, make these changes. And as you go down, you can kind of see that uh, in this case, the calcium and the uh, sulfite are low as of right here. And so those two are the ones that we're going to want to get up. These are in acceptable ranges when they're the green stars. So I generally, for my brewing, really only have to add gypsum. And I add about two in my two grams in my mash and two grams in my uh, sparge. And therefore, I'm going to add four grams total. And as, as you can see, as I add those, it actually changes both up here and then this little star changed down here. Um, so it's brought these into the green. Uh, I also has to have to add a calcium chloride a lot of times. I'll also add two grams of each and the others. So as you can tell here, uh, all of these now have, have actually gone into the green. And now down here, when you look at them, this is an acceptable uh, range for uh, brewing. But they also give you a couple of other things. So you have a chloride ratio, right? And so say we were to have less uh, calcium chloride added to it. Let's just bring this back down to zero, for instance. Actually, going to say highly bitter, just because we've added some gypsum and we're really low on chloride. So we're going to go, or uh, we're going to have to add some calcium chloride to get this up. And so say I only added two right away. It's still, even though it's in the acceptable range, we're still bitter. So you're going to want to make sure that when you're looking at these things. Uh, what what this is looking like, right? Depending on what kind of beer you're looking at. So then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this uh, up, or excuse me, up to here, excuse me, and add this to four. And when we do that, then it starts getting into balanced between malt and bitterness. And so as you play with this, uh, don't just look at these numbers and these numbers, for instance, they also give you a little bit of a, a indication of what your beer may taste like down here. So as you add, maybe you add six and see where that changes. Still balanced, eight. Oh, now it's getting into the multi range, but maybe that's what you're going with, right? So adding more calcium chloride will actually add a little bit more mouthfeel. And that might be something you're wanting to go for uh, in a hazy IPA, for instance, and having more juicy, hoppy flavor. And so you want to bump this up a few grams rather than, you know, you don't want to overdo it, but you want to add a little bit more. That's going to help you. And so that's going to give you a little bit of an idea of what you want to uh, accomplish here. And so in this case, um, since we're going for this balance profile, that this uh, number here is going to be off. But if we were to change this to, say, that light hoppy uh, profile, target profile, we'll click that and we'll say update our target profile. That's going to again change these numbers and you may be off again in some of these, right? And they may be in acceptable levels down here, uh, but you, you can get them closer into the green by changing which brewing salts that you're adding. So that's a, just a really quick uh, way to play around and get to know what you need to put in your beer to get your uh, balance uh, in uh, your brewing recipe. That's really gonna help you uh, make better beer in the long run. Now, for those that have a, uh, uh, want to take a, another step further, there is an advanced water chemistry calculator. And if you're starting to put recipes and things in Brewer's Friend, this is the page that it will bring it bring you to uh, when you're in your recipe and you actually click, you know, what, uh, you, you know, to, to change some of this stuff. So in here, I actually have some saved uh, water profiles. And so what I'm going to do, uh, you can actually, it'll save a, a record of those too, and you can actually reload some of them from a different brew that you did. So if you have a water or a, a brew that is a beer that's very similar, you can actually just bring that in. Um, otherwise you could do it here. So uh, you can, I have my profile water profile stored in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just click that. It will automatically bring in my uh, water, right? So we're going to have to go ahead and do that. And then it's going to talk about uh, adding salt additions down here. And it's kind of the same thing we did, but it gives you a little bit more uh, options uh, in each one of these tabs. But the same uh, report is down here. So it talks about those same uh, 
uh, numbers down here towards the bottom. And uh, if I did the same thing I did on the last page, I had my um, four grams of gypsum and four grams of calcium chloride. Um, it's going to bring you know those back into the normal uh, levels, and that's what I generally will do uh, for my beers. Uh, I'll change uh, a few of them depending on what my target is. And I didn't I didn't add the target. I just noticed up uh, here. Oh wait, uh, when you when you um, when you do that, you can select the target in this first target selection tab. Here we go. As you get more and more into it, and I am not an expert by any means, uh, go ahead and play around with this one as well. I think for most folks, just getting to know what things they need to add into their, their water. And again, when you're adding these numbers, remember, um, especially on the previous page, uh, when we get into the basic water chemistry calculator, this is for all of the water that you're gonna use. But if you're doing a brew in the bag, this is just going to be the amount of water that you would use for your brew in the bag. So maybe your water volume is just your boil volume. So in this case, maybe you only have six gallons here if you're doing a uh, five gallon batch. And so you're going to want to change that. All right. I hope you guys found that helpful. I, when I first got started brewing, was in no way ready to jump into water chemistry. But after a few uh, beers under my belt and I realized how important water was in my beer, I took that next step into adding some salt additions. And I'll tell you what, my beers went from pretty good to great based on the, uh, the types of beers I was brewing. Some of them were okay just the way I was beer brewing anyway, just based on the style. But it takes it to another level when you can really dial in your water to this specific beer type and style that you're looking for. So I hope that helped. Hit the like and subscribe button below. And with that, happy brewing and cheers.